We are bringing in a new room tonight on the OSCP path on Try Hack Me. Uh, this is a subscriber only room, so you have to be a subscriber to access it. Um, but they have great features. Um, this one's Game Zone. So we're going to look at uh, a little bit of web application penetration testing, uh, getting some credentials from database, and then how to use um, SSH shell uh, tunnel to to basically get to the back end and, and compromise some other service on the box. All right, so for this box, uh, I went ahead and already started it. Um, and each uh, instance gives you your own uh, IP to cha change and play with. So we'll look at the task. Uh, if you're new to Try Hack Me, they break down their rooms into tasks, and each one of the tasks allows you to kind of work towards the end goal of uh, root, root compromise. And that way, you kind of learn along the ways uh, some necessary skills, and also, um, you know can kind of start making a mental checklist of things to look at and, and, and test on. Um, I like them because it's kind of easier to show and, and have a path to show um, the penetration testing methodology there. So uh, we have a room, uh, we have a box up and with any box that we do, we'll, we'll go ahead and put this into our targets file. Uh, what we're doing here is again, we want to try to keep on scope. And so by putting it into a targets file, uh, we can make sure that, that that happens and we don't have to worry about anything uh, going outside of our scope there. So I just did a nano, um, pasted that uh, IP address in there by shift uh, control V. And now I'm pushing control X to uh, exit nano. It asks you to write the file. Uh, you push enter and it's going to save that file there. So we can do an nmap uh, dash IL. So that's input list, and then now we can put that as targets. So again, this is great for if you have a bigger range of things uh, to make sure that you're staying on target there. We'll do an initial scan. Uh, dash OA is uh, output all formats. I want to make sure that you're saving any of this data, and uh, I'm just going to name it initial scan. We'll do a T5 just to make it quick. So two ports came back, uh, 22 and 80. Uh, we'll go ahead and get the more in-depth scan going. Uh, I'll just call this ADV for advanced. Uh, we're going to add two more options. We're going to do a dash A um, for advanced OS detection and dash O for OS detection. We can also do a dash uh, uh, little s big V uh, for service version, if I remember correctly. Uh, or we can also do scripts equal default version and balls. So we'll leave this running in the background. Uh, it's going to take a little bit longer to do all the tests to kind of pull out the um, enumeration of the OS and of the services. And then it's going to run the scripts based on those ports that it finds. So we'll have that running in the background. Uh, helps if I do script instead of scripts. There we go. And helps if I do vol instead of vols. All right, so that's kicked off now. We'll open up a new terminal. So we had a website. So we'll look at the website. Um, So this is the game zone website. Uh, we see a couple characters on here. Um, one of the tasks at hand for uh, the box, and, you know, again, they're trying to make sure that you have access, that you know what you're doing, that you access the site is the name of the large cartoon avatar holding a sniper on the form. Um, so if you never played video games before, um, you can probably guess what this guy's job is. Um, he shoots people for money. So just kind of put that out there. Uh, the next task is to obtain access for via SQL injection. So again, try hack me kind of leads you in the direction of things. Uh, I'm going to show you how you could find this out on your own. So uh, what we'll first do is we want to uh, with any web page, you kind of want to walk through this. Um, so what I 
I do when I walk through web pages is I'll have burp running and you know this could be free or, or professional. Um, you have your proxy listener setting up on localhost 8080 and then on Firefox uh, if you install it's an add-on called Foxy Proxy it makes it so much easier for you to do um, changing between proxy settings without having to go through all the the menus. Um, so if you install Foxy Proxy, you'll have this little icon here. You'll click it and then uh, you'll click options and you can add a proxy. Uh, and we'll end up doing this again tonight uh, once we get further along to proxy our um, connection to the backend web server. So it's good to kind of have this uh, availability uh, and, and quick of ease there. All right. So we'll, we'll change that. We'll make sure that it's using burp and then um, you know usually walk through the application so you know we can click on these things uh, we see at the bottom that they're really just not going anywhere they're not any you know big links or anything like that uh, none of this is a link uh, so we have two things we have this here we have a login page and that looks like it does something it's waiting for it Okay, uh, we can try to register, but that doesn't go anywhere. And then we have a site search. So your attack surface is pretty low on this web page. Um, if we go back to our proxy now, um, on BERT, if you click the proxy tab and then HTTP history, that's where all the um, requests are at. Uh, an a big gotcha for most people when they first start not use uh, BERT is that it uh, has intercept turned on automatically. Um, so what you'll end up doing is you'll be trying to do stuff on the web page and nothing will happen and it'll just hang. That's because intercept's on and it's just waiting for you to you either manipulate that request to the server or send it you know, further down the line basically to the server. So that's something to kind of look for. All right, so we got two requests, right? We got this index.php here, and uh, when we click on this, we can see it's a post request. Uh, there's a username and a password, and an X and a Y field, and then a PHP session ID. And then it looks like the other one was a get request, and that's just an X and a Y. So if you don't know the difference between post and get, um, get puts all the parameters in the URL bar and post puts uh, the parameters in the body. Um, anytime that you're making a web application or uh, looking at a web application, any type of parameter should be in the body. And the reason for that is, is if this is every HTTPS, um, the body is encrypted, whereas the URL bar is not. So um, if you were to do a packet uh, capture and it's a get request, then you can see that whole um, get request being put out on the wire. Um, so that, again, that's a reason to kind of keep stuff in post via get. So we'll look at this page first. Um, I'm gonna do it a couple different ways just to kind of give you some context of things and see how to do this. So if you have the professional version of burp you can right click on this and data would blow yeah exactly uh Shabadoo. yep it would be logged onto the web access logs good good follow through there yep yeah all right so we're going to highlight the positions in burp again um this is a professional version so i'm going to show it multiple different ways tonight um usually i don't like to mess with the cookies at first uh, you can fuzz the cookies. Um, you can also fuzz user agents and stuff like that. Uh, I've seen uh, web web applications take the user agents and they're inputting that data into some kind of log analysis or to some kind of you know, administrative tool. And that's a way to kind of get an injection in there. Um, you could do cookies, uh, but we're going to focus mainly on this test password um, X and Y. So in burp here, um, we're selected as sniper. So uh, burp has multiple different um, attack types. So sniper is uh, it's going to try each 
the payload in each one of these and then move on to the next one and then move on to the next one and then move on to the next one. It, it's going to keep that same um, parameter. Uh, the, the parameter is going to be the same while it's t fuzzing the, the first parameter and then when it gets to the second one, all the other parameters will be the same while it does that. Um, battering RAM does all of the parameters at the same time. So uh, that'll basically try, you know, like one on username, password, X and Y. Pitchfork, is that right? It's that one or Pitchfork does that one at the same time. I always get those two mixed up. And then Cluster Bomb literally tries um, every possible combination ever. Cluster Bomb will always take the longest. Uh, I remember that one. Yeah. All right, so we're going to do Sniper. Um, the payloads, um, again, Burp has some built-in payloads here. What we're going to do is we're going to do fuzzing SQL injection. And this is basically a list. Um, you can see here uh, there's 134 in that list. It's, and because it's four different parameters it's going to try, it's going to be end up taking 536 requests to that. Uh, another cool feature, um, again, you can have number of threads. Um, sometimes on your more um, sensitive web apps, you'll want to throttle this a little bit, like a variable. Uh, another good thing to kind of use is grep. Uh, grep here match will basically flag any of these items if it finds anything. So that it's looking for these keywords. And these keywords basically uh, indicate some kind of SQL statement or back end or um, things like that. So, and then, you know, you can follow redirections uh, always, process cookies and redirections. Again, that just really depends on the web app. So we'll start that attack, we'll set that up, and then we'll try it a different way while this is going. So that's going to sit there. All right. So in BERT, if you never knew this, um, you can save request. So if you right click on free or professional, you can save the item. What this is going to do is it's going to save that request as a um, text file that you can load into other tools. In our case, we're going to use it into a SQL map. So this will be a login dot. And again, you can just name this whatever you want. Uh, but I'm going to do REQ. Uh, it's base64 encoding the request and responses. Uh, that's so that you know anything that ends up being es like escaped or whatever like that. Um, sometimes when it tries to load it into a tool, uh, it might you know act weird. So doing it with this uh, format is usually you know pretty safe option. So that saved it. Uh, saved it into that folder. We'll go into command line and for SQL map it's a dash R to read the file login request and I'm just gonna keep the output directory um, in here if you don't what it'll do is it'll put it into the user's home uh, directory in a dot SQL map file so uh, for newer U Linux users you might have a harder time trying to find where that's at um, so by putting the dash dash output dash dir um, equals, you know, the colon slash, that's, you might have a harder time finding the results or anything like that or, or any of the database or anything that gets dumped later. All right, so we got two things running here. Uh, I was going to show WFS2. I don't want to hit the server too hard. So we'll see, we'll see if anything comes up first. Um, so you'll see a lot of 200s. Uh, if we were to look at these responses, let me make this bigger. We can see incorrect login right there. So one of the things I'll like to do then is kind of put this into that bottom field down there and then um, you can almost just highlight it and then push down to go through each one and, as, and if there's a match then you know that's still incorrect right 
Um, another thing is each one of these are um, sortable, so you could change the status up here to 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 be different things if you needed to. Um, you could also hide. So uh, clicking this bar right here, the filter, yeah, we can we can change this by source. So if we were just looking for 300s, then I'll only show 300s uh, once this updates. Uh, so that's still going. Some kind of WAF, yeah, that's fine. There's probably not laugh. We're just probably hitting it too hard. So SQL Maps doing something similar. It's taking each of the parameters based on that request and then doing um, something with it. Uh, again, the the request is saved as a uh, base64. So just to kind of show you what that looks like. Um, this is the request there. So it's in an XML format. And so SQL map can kind of parse that data, look at it. And then what you have here is uh, the URL and it's uh, in a C data um, array. And, and so you see the URL there and then it has an IP host and port and protocol. And then there's the base64 version of that uh, request. Can you sort by link to look for changes in a response? Yes, you can. Yep. So um, that's that's what we're we're looking at here. We've filtered based on that uh, status. We could also just bring those all back in, and then uh, you could sort by those too. So since there's no different um, statuses right now besides 200, nothing's showing up. So depending on how long this takes, I might um, just kind of speed the process and talk about where it's at. Should find it pretty quickly, but I did notice that the login portion of this server is uh, a little slower, and it makes sense why. Uh, so another, again, another good thing about TryHackMe is it is telling you kind of how to look at this and how to understand SQL statements. Um, one of the things that I always tell um, people whenever they ask me about SQL statements, um, think of it as like a sentence where it's fill in the blank, right? And in this case here, what they're doing uh, on the back end is they're saying to the database, I need to select all from users where username equals blank and password equals blank. And what we're doing is when we're filling out this web form here, this username and password, we're sending that data into there, um, into this statement. Now with SQL, um, you can you can change those statements if they're not properly filtering or properly looking at those variables being put in there. And that's how SQL injection happens, right? So uh, what they're highlighting here is what you're seeing is this uh, semi-tick which stops the end of this this query because um, there would have been a semi-tick to be in there to begin there anyways and so that you know nulls it out basically so there would be a semi-tick another semi-tick and now it's just saying or one equals one which is a true statement and then um, comment out anything else after this statement and then adding a comment for there anything past that. So uh, there it is, text editor. So what we're looking at then is the original statement would have been right, right here. Right. And so now 
what it's doing is by adding that or one equals one dash 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 there was originally a um, in tick here and these two in ticks cancel out each other and now it makes a you know a big statement like this and so that's what it's basically telling the data the database then is now select all users from where where these were at possibly but this was an and statement right so we needed a username and a password or as long as one equals one just pick the first thing and that's what's going to happen i hope that makes sense all right so let's see here do we got anything different yet Doesn't look like it yet. All right, let's kill burp. I'll pause this. And so again, I'm just trying to keep things within the hour time limit, so. Right, yeah, so the, that's originally what it's trying to do, is it's trying to get a, the original statement was looking for a, a true statement, like username and password was the same, you know, found in that user's table. Um, so this statement, the or equals one, basically negates this whole, this front end, because we're saying, if either one of these statements, I, it, you could almost do it like this, really. Like if you did, if you added parentheses here, uh, that maybe that makes more sense, right? So those are the, the two statements then, right? And so with adding that or what equals one, then we've we've basically completed that back into the statement there. And so this negates the statement here. Um, and so the, that's where you get the, this is going to end up logging in as whatever the first user is in the database. Uh, because you didn't give it a username. It didn't look at it. It didn't care. It just went to this statement. OK, so since we kind of killed that a little bit. We see that now SQL map is identifying username appears to be and Borlean based where or having clauses injectable with string. So um, because it's blind based, it's doing a statistical model. So it's basically setting it at a time and seeing how long does it take for the server to reply back um, and then using that as kind of the base. So in burp, you can see this a little bit um, by doing columns and then response received. And so this this is the milliseconds that it took to get that response back from the server. And so that's a good indication too that you're on a path or something is causing causing it to be either more computative or less computative. And those are the ones you really want to look at, right? Like if it's if it's really in intensively um, takes a long time then there's something on, you know, then it's trying to process that data on the back end. If it's took a really short amount of time, um, then it just made the statement quicker and easier. Uh, and you can, you can kind of see some of that as it's working. And it, again, depending on the server though, you have to take an effect that if, if it's just getting beat up by your scanner or by whatever, there's going to be ones you know that are sticking out like this one here. Um, so we're completing the statement x and then and uh, one equals select count 
from tab name dash dash. And so this is a big, you know, this ended up being somewhat computational and it caused a, a longer response. So this is something I would try on that web, on the, on the form and see if that actually did anything. Uh, but based on the response, it's just a 200, so it probably did nothing. We're looking for a 302. We want to redirect. Uh, that's just the hint, basically. So SQL Map says that it figured found some stuff or figured it found some stuff and now it's trying different queries based on the SQL type server. Um, this should hopefully come back here and tell us uh, similar to what we we're kind of getting pointed to with the the website that try hack me. Any questions in chat while we're waiting on this to do its thing? Oops. Did SQL, did I explain SQL hopefully good enough to the nine viewers? All right. Uh, no, good so far, Kugel. All right, so we kind of... I mean, alluded to username appears to be Ann Borling, base blind, um, having a where cause. We'll let this sit in the background while it's doing it, but we can play with that a little bit. Um, so again, using Burp. Hey, hacking bad, playing the game, we're good, yeah. So using Burp will um, send this request to repeater uh, and repeaters available in the free version too. So we'll do repeater and in repeater, this kind of lets you rapidly test things. So uh, the first thing I like to do again is send that response. This is just a normal response. Like we haven't changed anything. Uh, so a couple things, you know, we're looking here um, at this. So again, we do see the incorrect login. Uh, if you needed to render it, you could render the page so you can see what it looked like. Uh, sometimes I've had to do this to, to kind of figure out where that message is at or or how the web application responds to you because it can get lost in JS, you know, uh, JavaScript or things like that. So, you know, kind of seeing that, oh, it's right there uh, helps out. Uh, looking at it raw, you can look at the HTML version. Um, so we, we see an incorrect there. So we'll, again, we'll put this in here so that we have a highlight, right? And if this changes, then we know we're on the right path. Uh, another thing I look at down at the bottom here is the number of bytes. So if it is a SQL injection and it's not blind, it will usually have a SQL statement that says, you know, this, this statement was incorrect, blah, 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 blah. So that's going to add bytes to the web page, and that's going to give you an indication that you know something happened. And then again, the number of milliseconds it took to access that resource. Um, so based on the initial, you know, SQL map pointing out things here, we have a Borlean base blind, and this is kind of what this is also talking about too. So let's try this or equals one dash dash. And again, I'm I'm kind of leading this direction. Um, because of what's going on, but uh, whoops, we were in burp, and so we'll put that here, and we can send that. All right, so that gave us the incorrect login. Another thing that you'll want to do. Um, is again because we're doing this in the like the raw we need to encode this um, so spaces and stuff like that in um, web applications don't um, don't fly so you have to encode them you have to you have to do what's called a URL encode so you just right click on this do um, convert selection and then URL and then encode key characters so that should uh, do the spaces, which it totally missed that one there. Thanks. Thanks, Burp. 
So let's try that. Um, I think those pluses are supposed to be percent 20. Alright, let's see here. Test out. Helps if we put our single tick here. Alright, so the statement ended up being test, single tick, um, plus is a space, or plus 1% 3D, uh, or this percent 3D is equals. So 1 equals 1, percent 20, which is another space, dash, dash, percent 20, dash. So the dashes basically kill off the rest of this statement so that it's just looking at that. Um, username equals test or 1 equals 1. And we see here that we get a 302. Uh, you noticed that the milliseconds were almost half of how much because, again, all it had to do was... Uh, find the first user in the database instead of looking through the whole database. Um, and we're still kind of waiting on this to find out. Will most of your SQL objections be that easy? No, not at all. Um, if the developer has done anything decent, then uh, you hopefully don't get a SQL injection, but it's possible. Uh, I've ran into some web apps that have been made for a while, and they have SQL injection in them. Um, all right, so we want to copy this over. Uh, again, we'll have to URL decode this now um, because we're putting it back into the, the form prompt now. So we'll right-click on this. Uh, you can send this to decoder, or you can also uh, convert selection and then do URL and then decode. And there you go. All right, so we're going to uh, totally miss that plus mark there. All right, so we'll copy this over. We'll go in here now. And we're still running everything through burp. Again, we want to catch this if it, if it does do anything uh, or if we need to play with the the response or anything. So we'll just I'm just putting in test in the bottom password. Clicking enter. All right, cool. So now we got a different page now. Um, doesn't look, again, our attack surface is low. We have just one extra page. There's no bar at the top. Uh, ask us to search for a game review. Um, you know, I would put in something and push test and see what would come back. Can I put asterisk asterisk might do something apparently not so if you know if this came back with a response that said something like you know search invalid or things like that um, that can help point in a direction um, oh look at that so I did a test single tick and it says, you have an error in your syntax statement. Um, MySQL server version for the right syntax to use near percent at line one. So it is another SQL injection. Yep. Yeah. And so, you know, what I normally do when I see these type of things, I would try, you know, cross-site scripting. So I would do script uh, alert. But with yeah, with SQL injection, then we kind of know that we're, we're what we need to actually focus on. The script alert, cross-site scripting is just going to give me, you know, the ability to maybe um, inject code onto a user or something like that. Where SQL injection is going to give me something better. So we did pipe that um, through Burp. Um, SQL map's not done. We're just going to kill this one. We don't need this now. We're we're past that part. So we'll clear this out. All right, and there 
there's burp, there's the proxy, and we want to find the one where we did uh, a good request. So we have a good request here, test. Um, we can see the response again. Doesn't come back with anything. So this is the one that we want to save and try that now in SQL map. So we'll right click save item. Uh, we'll save this as a um, portal dot req. All right, and that saved it now. So now we'll try this. On CS equal map will come up. So we'll do that dash r portal. Ah, oh, look at that. Quickly identified it, right? Even identified that it was MySQL. Um, so it's asking you, um, it looks like the back end's MySQL. Do you want to skip other payload tests of other DMS? We just said yes to save time. In a real test, I would say no, because again, this would be, it could be possible that it might be MySQL, but it might be something else. Um, so you'll, you, you would want to test all that. Um, so then in, it's identifying that it is Borling based, having uh, where clauses, it's injectable, it's also time based, um, it's vulnerable. Do you want to keep testing any of the others? We'll just say no. So one of the cool things here, uh, SQL map is basically telling you is here's all the different ways that it just discovered this parameter being uh, SQL injectable, right? So you can do uh, search item equals negative 2852 uh, tick, or uh, here's your Borlean based uh, 399, 3993 equals 3993, and then a tick uh, ha hash mark. So again, this is similar to that comment. Um, or error based, so you can do a test, a tick, and then see we're using an or statement again, select from account and then concatenate and then all this other stuff. Um, this is basically kind of trying to see, look at an error statement and figure that out. And then time-based, uh, that's usually with your sleep there. That's what the login page was having as a sleep. Um, so that kind of, that's why it t was gonna take so long with the, t the, the login page. And then a union query, so this is combining uh, trying to combine multiple tables or things like that. Um, all right, so we got SQL injection, right? And we want to see what's inside of this. So um, we know this is stable. We know, it, we, you know, we're not, uh, it, you saw how quick it went. So what we'll do is we'll up, up the threads to equal five now. And we're going to do a dash dash dump. Again, we'll want to put the output dir here uh, so that we can find this later. You want to skip payloads? Yes. Another um, there's another option to basically auto answer these questions. Um, Any time that it has a capitalized um, answer, that's basically the default. So if you were just push enter, it would go that way too. Um, so it's gonna test a little bit different methods of um, SQL injection again, even though it has some of those. Uh, actually, I guess because I didn't save it to that output door, um, we didn't do that right. All right, so it dumped the first table. Uh, we see that the table is named post and it's in database DB. Uh, we, there's ID numbers here, there's names, uh, descriptions, um, and it dumped it to this file so we could look at that later. Do we want to store temporary file for further processing? Um, it says no here, so we'll just do no. You know, crack them. Sure, we can try that. We'll just push enter. Uh, push enter again. So it's it identified what it thinks is hashes. Um, it identified the hashes as um, SHA-256 generic and uh, 
spun up like four processes to try to use a generic word list. So again, if you you were doing this in a in a time type thing, you would you know you would skip this. Um, all right, so it did dump a, a table users there uh, we can see, and we have two things: we have a PWD, which looks like a password hash, and a username, Agent Forty Seven. So again, if you go back to that first thing, if you didn't know the answer, you kind of do now. All right, so we're past that. We did SQL map now. Um, in the users tables, what's the hash password? You just saw that, the username of it. And was there any, was there another table name? So again, SQL map did point out for you that there was another table name. It's right there. All right, cool. Uh, so we want to get this. Um, where we can start cracking that. So um, we can put this in ourselves uh, by doing, let's do, echo, copy the, the username. So you, usually you want a username and then um, password into your, uh, and just separate by colon. So one of the things that we need to do, though, is um, figure out what hash this is. Um, and the reason you want to do that is we're going to use John uh, the Ripper. And it, it works better if you kind of know the hash. Um, to specify, so. So we'll want to change that off of there. So there's some example hashes from Hashcat. Um, this gives you, you know, a bunch of different types of ones. I'm going to tell you just based off of experience and and looking at it, we're going to be looking at raw SHA. Let's see if they have it. SHA-256. Hash identifier. Yeah, that's another one, too. You could use hash identifier. I think there's... I know there's a script for it. Come on. hash identifier. So that's a good point of a tool. Let's see. Let's, I don't know if it's still in here in the new. Yep, there it is. Cool. Identifier and then, oops. So there you go. There's another possible hashes least possible hashes. No. Good call on that one also. All right, so now we know um, what the the format is. So now we can pump it into John. So it's John and then um, the hashes. That's the text file that we saved. Again, username colon um, the hash. Then we're going to specify a word list. So it's word list equals user word list. Uh, this word, these word lists are saved on uh, the installation of Kali uh, most of the time. And then it's rock you dot text. And like I said, we need to specify the format. So format equals uh, raw dash sha two five six. Uh, all right, what did I do wrong? I 
Might already have it. Did I use John Jumbo? Uh, I used the John that's installed on Kali by default. I, I know it's because I already cracked it one time, but... Uh, where is it at? Shell, about, port, phone, list. Whoops, helps if I pelt spelled cash right. Uh whoops. <laughs> it's probably the worst thing to do is just search on YouTube or you search while you're trying to Oh my gosh. Uh, you could also use Hashcat, but uh, the machine that I'm doing this on, Hashcat would not work. Um, let's just do, let's see. Format dash raw dash shaw uh, two fifty six. That's right. Uh, word list. John hashes. Look at my notes. Just to make sure I didn't miss something too. Format equals. That should be it. One password hash loaded. No passwords hash left. To to do. All right, so if you don't know, you can always do man John and then the we can do dash show, but that's just going to show it uh, or restore. Oh, I could also just kill off. Oh, okay, cool. Yep. John, word list, text, format, raw. Uh, oops. Sorry, dropped completely up. Yeah, I see you, Shabadoo. Um, John Jumbo. I don't think John Jumbo is on here. Yeah, see, it's not coming up. Me. How do I do? I think it's allow. Ah. All right. Anyways, I'll delete the pot file. That's what I'm gonna end up doing. So, ls uh, that dot john. Yep. And then. I am John dot pot. Okay. Better. All right. So LS user share word list. It was complaining. It was user share. Use least. It was complaining that I didn't have it. So user share word list. Share word list, rock you. There we go. All right, there we go. A couple stumblings, and then we finally get it. So if you never ran John before, again, there's the past. That was the hashes that we put in. We specified a word list. Uh, in Kali, you have built-in user share word list. There's different word lists in here. 
a uh, common thing for CTFs is Rock U. Um, I've seen some on sec list. Um, and then we specified the format. So it's going to spin up a couple threads and run through each one of those word lists. Uh, what it's doing basically is taking, um, let's just do like a tail. It's taking each one of those word lists and then putting it into that format and seeing if they eat, if they're the same. If they're the same, then it's the same hash. Uh, that's why uh, when you do things like that, uh, you want to salt your passwords. So if that password was salted, originally it would have had some characters at the front end of it and then another colon and then the password. Um, so what I'm showing you here tail by telling the the Rocky list, these are just the words, some of the words inside that, that list that it's going to try and then put it, it's going to SHA-256 it and then see if it equaled to the same one that we found. Uh, all right, so we got we got the, the username or the password and we have a username now, right? Um, so anytime we have that, let's, you know, try the attempt to access the host now. All right. How, see how time's going with the the host here. Oh, we still got an hour. We're good. All right, so we're gonna SSH um, again. Remember that we got the username from earlier, and uh, we have the box IP. copy <laughs> not the hash yes and we are going to type in that password right there All right, cool. So we're on the box now. Um, so now we're a standard user. Um, like any other, you know, situation, we'd want to um, determine, you know, what privileges we have and, and things like that. So we could get a uh, privilege checking script on here. Uh, we could also look at other ports and stuff. Um, so uh, opt, and then I have, it's the privilege escalation awesome script suite. Um, so if you have not seen this one, this is where linpeas and winpeas is at. Um, So that's Windows, and then they also have the Linux version, LinPs. Uh, so if you never used this before, it's really great um, script. It takes a little bit to run, but it'll give you all the possible avenues. Um, we're gonna run it, but um, that's not the you know not the objective on here. We're just I'm just kind of showing it. Uh, so yeah, we we did this. We SSH'd. Uh, Another common thing to do is also see um, what services are running on that host and what ports and stuff like that. So let's run let's run the LNPs and then we'll we'll also get another shell in there and and start working through that. Actually, let me do that side by side here. So let's go up here. Let's side by side this. Uh, Oops. All right, so now we now we have two shells. All right. 
we'll see the lint piece. Oops. Uh, so the lint piece script is right there. Uh, if you have not done, uh, if you have not learned Python 3, uh, how to do the HTTP server, this is how you do it. It's Python 3-M, uh, single tick HTTP dot server, single tick, and then the port. So on this one here, we're going to do a wget. It'll be our IP address. And that's going to be linps.sh. Watch it be the time that it's not my IP address. Not my IP address, of course it's not. So 11.0.14. Oh, and then I forgot to put the port. So colon 8,000. Okay, there we go. That's downloaded on there. We can kill this now. So there's there's the lin piece. There's also the user text file in that directory. Uh, so we'll chmod this, uh, make it executable. So chmod plus X and then lin -piece. and then we'll lin -piece that and so that's gonna run through there uh, I'm gonna close that so we got more we can have side by side going this way all right uh, so while this is run let's look to see what services we have running on here um, netstat is the old way of doing things so netstat dash ln lnt is listening uh, numerical and TCP connections. So we see that we have a TCP connection um, of 10,000 on all ports. We have a local host that's running uh, MySQL uh, and SSH, right? And so when we went to our original scans, we did not see uh, that 10,000 port. So let's see if that comes up again. So dash I there, targets, uh, dash P is the specific port, and then it is 10,000. So this is just going to scan that specific port. We want to see if this comes back. And it says it's closed. So there's got to be some kind of um, rule or something in place not allowing outside connection, even though on the box it is showing as all zeros. Um, so that, that would be like an IP tables or something like that. Um, LinPs is done. Uh, so just kind of highlight some of the things from LinPs. Uh, let me make this box bigger. There we go. All right. So Again, here's LinPs if you've never seen it. Uh, red or yellow is basically what you're looking for um, for majority of this stuff. Uh, red is definitely another lookout. So if it's red and yellow, definitely look at it. If it's red, you know, that would be the next thing to focus on. Oops. So we see there are, you know, some user directories or um, paths uh, in the path. So like he's has been and and such on the path so that that might be would be you know exploitable check if there's any mounted there's some useful software so that we see there's netcat installed wget w uh, curl ping i would take all these and i would go to um, gtfo bins and look to see if if there's a way to privilege escalate on that so if you've never seen gtfo bins here they are. Um, again, you would just take like netcat, so you can use it as a reverse shell. 
You can also use it as a bind, file upload, file download, and a sudo. So that's something to look at. Uh, again, that's not the path of this box that they're wanting you to do the SSH thing. So I'm going to show that, but just kind of giving you the ideas uh, as you're working through this box, what you should be looking at. So again, we see that the MySQL database there, we also see that port 10,000. Some groups. There's the users. So there's only two users with console. Uh, there's root and agent 47. Who's logged in now? Password, things like that. And then there's some interesting files. Again, I love how this highlights those type of things. It can tell you some of the uh, possible CVEs and stuff uh, linked to that that you could use. So. All right, uh, let's move it on since we're already running at the top of the hour here. I want to show the cool SSH tricks. All right, so we're SSH gen already, right? And and great, but I want to see what this port 10,000 is, what this is. Now, most people would then open up, have you ever used PSPy? No, I have not. Shabadoo, I've not used it. Uh, is it another privilege escalation script? like there's like hundreds of them so another you know normal time people would just all right let me create another shell um what one of the cool things that you can do in an ssh shell is oh okay that new that's pretty cool yeah i'll have to look at that one i am going to take a note of that then ps pi so what he wrote in the chat then is that um that it's a way to snoop on um, processes and possibly use those uh, without needing root for privilege uh, for root and stuff like that. Great for CTFs. So that's pretty cool. All right, um, SSH. So in an SSH session, if you want to now specify options, so I want to do an SSH tunnel. Thanks. I saw it, Shabadoo. I know the Streamlabs thing's not letting links, but I saw it. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. Here, I'll I'll even post it in there. That way, we can put it in there. There you go. Thanks, man. All right. Um, you can do SSH options, right? So the way that you do SSH options is um, push push control and then, or no, shift in the tilde, and then question mark, no, it's control. No, shift, tilde, question mark. Right? I had this. Is it alt tilde? Oh my gosh. Nope. Ah, uh, you're gonna show me up now. At ten, ten. One four. Tell one five eight. Tilde. All right, now it's not let me do it. <laughs> That's weird. So it's usually the tilde and then question mark, and that allows you to specify options in. Um, Open SSH. I'm trying to do that. Oh, Shift Control. I forgot my keyboard's stupid. Shift.
Yep, that's not let me do it. Ah, poopy. All right. I'll, I'll show you the regular way then. All right, so on SSH, uh, you can specify local and remote. Um, and it's just the way that the pipe basically ends up being. So if you do a dash L, that's going to be on your local system. We're going to open up port 10,000, right? And then you're going to put colon. And then this is going to be on that system. We are going to contact the local host on port 10,000. So let me say this again. Dash L means on our local system, we're going to open up port 10,000. On the SSH system, it is going to then contact local host on port 10,000. This could be other things. So again, in a, a more tiered network, if, if there was like an IP address behind this one, you could put that IP address and then put a different port. So like, say there was a web server behind this um, on a different, you know, like 1010, I don't know, 114.156 or something, right? Yeah, uh, known host. That's that's to specify, I think, the host that you have access to or know, or know about. Like you could put a name instead of the IP address. Um, all right, so this, this is going to do that. And we got to put that in. And what I was trying to show is that you could do a tilde um, when you already have an SSH session open. So if you do that in SSH, a majority of the time it will show the options. Um, of course, now that I'm on stream, it doesn't want to do that. So this is this is basically opened up. You don't see anything here, um, but this has opened up that port 10,000 now on my system. And the way that we can see that is, let's clear this out. Whoops. We'll split the terminal here and we'll do a netstat LNT uh, and then we're going to grep for 10,000 just to keep it clear. So we can see here I'm listening on localhost 10,000. All right. So we got to figure out what this local host is. Right? Like, what's what's this 10,000 thing, right? Yeah, demo gods. Um, we could do a, an nmap. Uh, now that we have that, so we could do nmap. 127.0.0.1 dash port 10,000 dash SV and see if we get anything. So again, this is going to take, it's going to try to connect our port 10,000. It's going to tunnel that traffic through to the other side on agent 47 and then do its you know request there. All right, while well, that's doing that, let's see what else we're doing. Uh, SSL, so yeah, so the newer version instead of netstat is SS. Um, also, newer versions of Ubuntu, you don't have I IF config, it's IP space A now to do, um, to figure out your IP address. Um, okay, so that it kind of picked that up. So you could see this. So we could do SS up here. That's all the sockets. If we do LNTP, that just lists the ports. Um, so a little different format than netstat, but that's that's the newer version that they're going to. Um, if you do IPA, that's also the newer version. So it's good to kind of know those commands because if you do a fresh install of Ubuntu right now, you have to do IPA instead of IF config. Um, which throws people off too. All right, so Nmap came back now, and we can see that this is a mini serve um, web service. So we do have access to this website. Um, so let's see this, right? Like, how do we see this now? We have our tunnel established still. 
And so in Foxy Proxy, what we're going to do here now is we're going to go to Options, and we're going to add a new proxy. Um, we'll do this again. It's going to be on our local host. And this is going to be port 10,000 now. So again, it's using that SSH tunnel to take our traffic and put it over to that through that host. So if we do this and open up a new tab, now we need to point that to that there and I think that's it. Yep. All right, cool. So now we can see that website. Um, pretty neat, pretty cool little feature. Um, so you could try to brute force this. Um, so the common methodology when I when I look at stuff like this is I would look at the the version number, see if there's exploits, and then if not, then with web stuff it's usually you know if it's only this try the sql injection again uh try to brute force uh, just make sure brute force is within scope uh, again for the saving amount of time uh, this is going to be an exploit so we will do ms fdb run yeah look at the source code yep so you can look at the source code that's another good yeah you right click your source page. Sometimes there's comments in here uh, that developers leave. Um, there's JavaScript that might have a password in it. So looking at the JavaScript, things like that. Yeah, good, good insights there. We're going to search for um, Webmin. That was the name of it. If I can spell right. And then we're going to specify type exploit. All right. And since we're working down here, I'm just going to make this one bigger and we can leave that up there. All right. So we have four options here. Um, again, to save time, I'm going to jump to the one that it is. And it's going to be the show EGI exec. So that's number two. So again, if you have not used the search function before Metasploit, uh, these numbers are actual usable numbers, so now I can just do a use two, and that automatically does the use exploit Unix blah 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 blah. Uh, show options. Uh, so we need to specify um, certain things. So we need to set the password. That's going to be that password that we got before. Game er one two four. Set username. It's going to be that agent 47. And our host. So the our host again is going to be our, our local host because it's got to talk to our local host to go through the SSH session to talk to that, that other end. Uh, and it's not using SSL, so we need to set SSL off. Let's do SSL off, set uh, our host 127.0.0.1. And then we should go ahead and set a payload too, right? So set payload. And let's see what payloads are available. So we got a command Unix and reverse and. Thanks for the follow, Bibrak. And there was another follow earlier that I missed, and I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm not seeing it. I'm sorry about that. And so we'll just stick with reverse, and then we'll show options again and see what we got. So we need to set the L host. L host uh, again you can do ton zero so that's going to pull the IP address of our interface to put that in there and so this looks all set up now if we show options one more time everything's set everything that's required is set so we just do an exploit so again to point
point out what's going to happen is it's going to go to our local host port 10,000. It's going to use that SSH shell that we have to then uh, basically SSH uh, use the SSH tunnel to send this exploit to this web server on on the um, same host that's just only exposed to the local interface. Uh, and then we're going to do an exploit dash J. All right, cool. So it says that we have a command session, but this is just a shell session, which is great and dandy. But um, if you've ever done Metasploit, you always want Meterpreter. So search uh, met and then type is going to be, oh, if I could type TYPE, it's going to be post. And what we want to do is the shell to Meterpreter. So we're going to use number seven. Show options. We're going to set session to one and set L host We'll try ton zero. Um, sometimes this works, sometimes it does not. All right, and now we have an interpreter session. So some of the big things to kind of note here is that we can see that our user ID is zero, our GID is zero, and our EUID and EGID is zero. So basically we have root at this point. Um, we can jump in there and look at that and I think it's who am I? System info. Is it privs? No, privs is not on there. Nope, who am I is not on there. Uh, there it is, get UID. No, that's the interpreter, thanks. You're not helping me here. Uh, let's see here. Get UID. There it is. Yeah. We could do shell and then we could do ID and see that we're root. And then you can also do background or control C. Yeah, shell to interpreter is a great way to, and you, that could be any shell that you have. It's a great way to upgrade your shell and get um, a interpreter session. Okay, uh, so let's see what else. So we got the CMS version. Uh, we picked that up from the, the scans uh, earlier when we did nmap, uh, the name of the same thing of the name. And then what's the root flag? So we would just need to find the root flag. So that should be... Right there cool all right so that's that's pretty much the box there um again the only thing that did not work was that ssh um which should work uh i'm kind of disappointed that it didn't i really wanted to show that off but yeah you should be able to do a tilde in an ssh session and get access to um the ability to change the connections and and so what that'll look like is it'll have like a prompt um, and you can just do dash L. You would just specify what you would have specified before. So like the dash L colon slash localhost and then that and pushed enter and that would have just upgraded that SSH session from a normal SSH session to uh, like a reverse tunnel or local tunnel. Um, so yeah. Sorry that that not work on stream. I did test it out. I always end up testing all this stuff out before I do a box so that you guys get hopefully high quality content. <laughs> all right. Thanks again. Um, yeah, I'm glad you got one. Yeah, the try hack means great learning resources. Uh, that even. 
even for seasoned pen testers, it helps out a lot. All right. Thanks, everyone, for joining the stream tonight. Appreciate it, and you all have a good night. Thanks. Bye.